In today's video, I'm gonna show you an easy and fun project that you can do to sharpen your macro skills at home. So I'm taking a photo of a slice of lime. Now, that might not seem like exactly the most exciting of macro subjects, but it does combine quite a few different elements that you would use in macro photography. The focusing, it's got different lighting going on, so it is one that you can learn a few little tricks that you can then take out into the field to use for some maybe more exciting macro photos. And I like doing projects like this. I've done them before with the with some bubbles and finding swirling colors in there. I've done it with water droplet. I've done it with um, taking close-up photos of matches and smoke. And all of those things teach you new techniques. It teaches you how to refine those skills. I'm very much of the belief that the more skills that you develop, the better your photos will be. And doing these things can be quite fun and you can end up with some creative images that you've taken at home. And that's great if the weather is terrible over autumn and winter and you aren't going out shooting as much as you wanted, you've still got some nice projects that you can do with your camera in your room. So I'll take you through the setup that I've got here at the moment. So I've got my Canon 5D4, I've got a 100mm macro lens, I've cut a thick slice of lime which is being held in this nice clamp and that is in front of my LED light. Now on the front of that I've got my softbox but I'm actually using this LED light and the softbox as the background. What I'm going to be doing is shooting through the lime. That's an interesting way of shooting for this kind of subject because of course a middle slice of lime is basically transparent or at least maybe translucent. So that light completely penetrates the lime and so you can get an interesting photographic effect by backlighting it rather than just lighting it from the front. So here is the scene as I've got it on the back of camera. You can see I've got this really nice close-up view of the lime itself. It is filling that frame. And you can already see that by backlighting it, we can see all of these really nice textures on the lime itself. If we just zoom in, have a look through all this, like it looks really, really nice. And we've even got a little drop of lime juice coming out of the bottom. So I've been having a little play around with the settings. I wanna start with my lowest ISO possible, which is easy enough because we're in controlled situations, so I don't need to boost that ISO. Um, aperture 5.6, and I found that about a 30th of a second um, is good enough, but actually I'm gonna ramp up that um, aperture to about F9, because I wanna make sure that I'm getting the sharpest focus possible on all of the parts of the lime. So I'm manually focusing, so if I just zoom in and take a little look here, it doesn't look like it's quite pin sharp. Focusing very much on the front of the lime, because obviously the lime itself does have depth. It's about a maybe a centimeter thick, maybe a little bit less um, slice, and so I wanna make sure that um, I'm focusing right on the front rather than sort of focusing inside the lime. Let's just give that a quick go see where we're going. Okay, it's a little bit dark, so that's fine. We're gonna take down that shutter speed. So to be honest, the shot that I've just got there is already looking really, really nice. And I could just leave it there, take that over into Lightroom and consider it done. But I just wanna play around with adding another light. And I want this light to be coming from the front just to light up the edges of the lime a little bit more, light up that rind because the middle of the line where all of this backlight is coming through is quite bright, but I just feel that I could add a little extra touch of light to make it a more even exposure. Now you probably notice I've already got a trigger on top. This is the same light that I've used in some of my previous macro videos. It's the Godox AD200 with the X-Pro trigger. So I am starting this off with the lowest power and let's just give this a quick go. So I think my focus is still a little bit off, so I'm just gonna double check that. And I think this may be one that I'm going to end up trying to focus stack because even at F9, I think I'm struggle struggling that if I focus right on sort of the middle uh, core area of the lime, that I think the rind isn't quite in focus and also the droplet that's coming off is about a millimeter behind the front of the actual lime. And so that isn't quite in sharp focus either. So I think what I'm probably gonna do is take two or three different shots 
um, of the lime itself. And then I'm gonna take an additional one focusing on that water droplet. And that's what we're gonna then blend in post to make sure that we've got a perfectly sharp image. Always make sure that you're zooming right in on those details just to check that everything is exactly as you want it. It is much easier to fix these problems in camera than finding out in Lightroom later on that you haven't got the shots that you want. I have done that and it's not great. I think now that I've got the settings exactly where I want and I know how I want to position my light, I'm gonna start taking what I would now call the real photos. The ones that I've done so far are the experiments. These are the ones that I use to get the settings right. So most of these, they're not gonna work. These aren't my finished photos. So always a good tip to do when you're doing things like that. Put your hand in front of the camera and take a quick shot. Now that means when you go into Lightroom, you can see that there is a good marker and you can know that, okay, that's the point where I start taking my photos for real. Just makes things a little bit easier to understand when you get into post. So I'm starting off, I'm gonna focus up on this top middle bit of pith. That looks nice and sharp. Bring in my light. Oops, I've actually bringing, <laughs> bringing in that light. I actually nudged the line, so that's probably changed my focus. Make sure that you're being very careful about that. Actually, it looks okay. So bring that light back in more carefully this time. Tap to take my shot. Okay, there is our first image. And I know that I focused, that's nice and pin sharp on the middle of the line at the top. So now I'm gonna go back in. I'm gonna take one here, just double check that that is nice and in focus. I mean, it looks pretty good to be honest, so I think we're okay. But still, I wanna make sure that I've got everything that I need. Take that, making sure that I'm holding the light in exactly the same position every time. And definitely now, as we get closer to the bottom of the line, I can see that that rind was definitely not sharp. So I'm gonna get another one for that. Yeah, so now if we zoom in on that little bit, we can see that that is absolutely pin sharp. The last shot that we need to get though is on the droplet because that is a little bit soft as we can see here. And that's great that it's just hanging around. It hasn't actually dropped off. It means I can go in, get that focus, take our shot. So now I've got those shots with the different focus points. I can take those over into Lightroom and Photoshop and stack them all together. So let's do that now. So here we are in Lightroom and you can see I've actually taken quite a few just playing around with those settings. We've got ones that are way too dark and then this one here is too bright and overexposed. So really is important to just play around with those settings, spend the time, make sure that you've got your image looking exactly how you want it to in camera because it can be a little bit difficult to balance these things. And this is exactly why it's a really great learning experiment. Even if you don't really care about getting a fun shot at the end of it, you can learn so much about using lighting, particularly in things like macro photography and product photography, just by doing these little experiments. Obviously you can see all of these ones and because we did the little hand in front of the camera, this one, we've got our marker. So I know that these last four are the main four images that I actually want to use. So I'll start off and just do a few quick adjustments. I wanna adjust that white balance. Let's just check what auto looks like. Ooh, no, too warm. Let's grab that um, eyedropper and maybe pick a target neutral up here. You know what, it's all over the place. Let's just do this manually. Temperature should be quite cool and we want it to be quite green because limes are green. So looking pretty decent. I wanna increase the exposure ever so slightly, up those shadows a little bit, maybe bring down slightly those highlights. Um, it's looking good, but there is one thing I'm noticing. We have got a little bit of a darker patch in the background here, and it's lighter over here. And I think that's just because the softbox I was using wasn't quite an even background. It's a little bit weird it's a bit cheap to be honest is the problem um and that's fine you know you, you don't need to use a softbox for this kind of thing you could just use like a white sheet and just put a speed light behind it you could even just use a white wall and fire a speed light at the wall as long as like you've got a white background which is lit up then that's all you really need to do this um but i think that i can fix this because this darker area looks blue and so I think if I go into my HSL I can go into that saturation grab the blue 
drag it down. In fact, yeah, as I do, if I drag that up and down, you can see this bit of background shadow is entirely blue. So just getting rid of that blue color, because there's no blue in the line, this is fine. And then also dragging that blue luminance up, we've in one go fixed that background error. And now we've just got a nice plain white background. Perfect. Let's go into our hues, drag that yellow, move it slightly up, I think, because it's a little bit, um, it was a little bit sort of sickly yellow and it's a lime. I want everything to look nice and emerald green. And we're also going to drag the green. It's just, again, a little bit yellowy green right now and just move it, not a lot, because you can start to go very, very weird with it. We don't want that. Somewhere around, let's start at zero again and just gradually move it up somewhere like there, plus 15 ish is all we need for it to have like a nice actual greeny tone, maybe a little bit less actually, plus 12. So now turn off and on. We've just adjusted those colors. I think it's already looking really nice. Let's just look at our before and our after. We've brightened it up. We've made those colors a little bit more rich. We've adjusted that background. So now I'm gonna select all of these, right click on the first one, develop settings, and then sync settings, synchronize everything. That's just going to make sure that those same settings are applied to all of our shots. So now what I'm going to do is right click and I'm going to go edit in, open as layers in Photoshop. So here are our layers. This one I do know is the one, the first one is the one that's nice and sharp on the top, I think. So what we're going to do, turn all of these on, select all of them, go to edit and we're gonna to go to auto align layers. And that's just gonna nudge everything back into shape just in case I move the camera the tiniest amount when taking the shots. It's also gonna adjust for the size difference when you focus in and out. So now everything should be nicely lined up as I turn these on and off. It's looking pretty good. I'm just gonna try doing a focus stack with Photoshop because it does have a focus stack tool and most of the time it can work really well. Only sometimes do I have to kind of go and do it manually. So selecting all those and again, edit, auto blend, stack images, okay, and it will run this. And having a look at it, it's done a pretty decent job all around. This line does look really nice and in focus, the bottom part's in focus. Not convinced about this droplet though. So you know what, let's undo everything. Let's not do that. Let's just deselect this layer, the droplet layer. And what we're gonna do is blend all those other layers. So the lime layers, but not the droplet layer. We're gonna just add that in ourselves afterwards. Okay, so that's done. And so now we definitely do have a nice sharp lime. That's looking good. Um, so now if I just drag this water droplet layer onto the top, turn that off. Turn it on, turn it off, turn it on. You know what? I don't think it makes any difference because I think my um, 100 mil macro was so sharp anyway at F9. I don't think it's made a blind bit of difference, but I'm just gonna show you what I would do anyway because it's very, very easy to do this. We're gonna turn it on, create a mask, invert that mask, Control or Command I so that it's black. A black mask hide, hides everything, a white mask reveals it. This way we can just get a brush in about this size, select a white color for it. Um, flow, yeah, sure, at 100% and opacity at 100%. And we would just paint in that droplet, making sure not to go over the rind, because if we do, it gets rid of that um, layer, that sharpness, so we don't want that, undo. So now all we've done, if we just have a look down here, you can just about see all we've got on this mask is that little bit of white revealing that droplet. So that's all you would need to do to achieve a proper focus stack on this lime. So now we've got everything nice and sharp and it looks great. You can then go to layer, you can flatten the image and then we can go and uh, maybe duplicate that layer, go into um, something like camera raw filter, which brings in all of the same Lightroom tools that you might have used. And we can play around a little bit more with that exposure. We can bring the exposure down. If it's a little bit too bright, we can start playing around with maybe adding some dehaze and some clarity to bring out a little bit more of that that texture is looking a little dark around the outside. So why don't we just get a get a brush in a smallish size, reset our adjustments, increase that exposure. Just try brushing in a little bit of 
exposure on the edge, something like this. Nice. So it's very easy to do. Brush in a bit here in the middle where it's also a little bit dark. You know, using brush tools, things like this, is a great way of just sort of controlling exactly where you want that light to go in. So we haven't just increased everything. We've increased just that little outside section. Look, turn that off, turn it on. It's made a big difference. And we can go in and just get rid of little tiny bits if we want. You know, maybe get rid of whatever these are. You know, if it's tiny bubbles, I mean, I like the bubbles. The bubbles is texture. We've got a little stray bit of dust on the outside. Also, don't love this bit. So let's get the um, clone stamp tool and just remove that. Same again here. Done. Very, very simple tools. And again, all of them are tools that we should be practicing using because they are all crucial in macro photography generally. So no, this is not the most incredible image you'll have ever seen. It's not even the best image of a line, but it's a really good little technique just to practice. It's something that's so easy to set up at home. You can practice your lighting, practice your focusing, and then you've got those skills. They're, they become hard-baked into your brain so that when you actually get out side and you're shooting again you know exactly what it is that you want to do you know actually while i've been talking i have noticed one thing the left side of the lime is a little bit darker and slightly cooler in tone than the right side particularly noticeable when you kind of zoom out and you look at it from a distance there is a very definite change what i'm going to do is should be a very easy fix duplicate that layer again like that go to filter i'm going to go to camera raw filter this time I'm just gonna grab a graduated filter. I'm gonna have the exposure slightly increased, but also the temperature slightly increased, maybe about plus eight. Drag it across just to halfway and it's done it, easy. Maybe not that temperature down, a couple of notches, plus seven actually, I think looks fine. That's all it takes, we t turn that off and on, off, and on and that really has just brought that left side more in line with the right side dead easy i don't think it's done a lot to the background let's just have a little look maybe it has a tiny bit so again bring in a mask bring in our brush tool larger size this time we want to get rid of the layer and so we're going to paint with black on here like this just around there done and then we turn it off and on off and on and you can just see it's made the left rind of the lime both brighter and a little bit warmer in tone so that it matches the right side so that is the image done and again techniques that we'd want to use out in the field um well maybe not photoshop out in the field but you know what i mean so that brings me to an end of this week's video. I really do hope that it's been helpful to see how I would go about taking a shot like this, trying to find some creativity and some inspiration for things to take at home. I genuinely do think that it is so important to practice these kinds of things, to do, try these little experiments to hone those skills, maybe even learn new skills, because it is exactly those same skills that you'll be relying on when you next take your camera out and about, when you take it on holiday and you find something amazing that you want to photograph. So things like these are really useful exercises to try. The more you practice, the better you're going to get with your photography. And if you have enjoyed the video, do please hit that like button and consider subscribing to my channel if you don't already. And I will see you next time.